Hello everybody and welcome. In this lecture we're going to quickly go through applying our transforms. It's really straightforward but it will catch you out at some point in the future if you forget to do it. Now you can apply an object's location, its rotation and its scale but you might not want to do all of them for reasons I will now go into. So what, why do we need to do it in the first place? Well Here's a little list for you of things that will go wrong if you don't apply at least a scale or perhaps even a rotation. Uh, first of all, we've got modifiers. We'll be getting into modifiers really soon. Modifiers are great because they enable you to repeat objects, to change your mesh data non-destructively. And I love having a non-destructive workflow. It enables you to be very experimental and very playful with your models without ruining them. So we've got modifiers, we've got the physics engine, we've got particle systems, texture mapping, UV unwrapping, object shading, rigging, issues with armatures, parents and children, uh, and there's so much more weirdness that we hopefully will avoid if we remember to apply our transforms. So let's go ahead and select one of these objects that we have here. This does not have a rotation, which is great, but let's say it did. Let's rotate it round 90 degrees on the global x-axis. And then let's just change these values here. Let's put it as, oh, what do I need here? Because I've rotated it round, you see. Well, this is where the gizmo might be useful. Or indeed, you can just scale it and just see what you get. So X is just bringing it backwards and forwards. That's fine. I want that set at 1. Y is making it taller and uh, shorter. So we just want that set at 1. And we want this one at 4. Because it's laying down, it's 90 degrees. And because it's local Z axis is now the Y axis, the local Y axis is now the global Z axis. Anyway, transforms can be a bit of a pickle. So we've got a rotation here of 90 degrees. So what we can do is go to the object menu, go to apply, and you can see the shortcut key there is control and A. And we can actually apply the rotation. Now watch what happens when we do that. The rotation is now zero degrees. Now that's really useful. We now know that it is set like that. And we can do the same for the scale. If we go in, go object, apply, scale it's now got a scale factor of one so it really is one by four by one whereas before it was being manipulated into those shapes we'll find out more about that when we start talking about mesh data rather than just the object itself so the one we haven't touched yet is an object's location now if we go ahead and apply an object's location this time i'm going to use the shortcut keys control and a and go to location notice that that has stayed where it is but the origin of the object is jumped down to zero 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 the world's origin now this is actually undesirable because if we were going to do physics with this object now for example this object's center of gravity would be over here that would make no sense and it would be incredibly difficult to work out what was going on if you hadn't realized it was the origin being in the wrong place so i'm going to undo that for the moment and leave it in the center so in general you probably do want to apply your rotations and your scale but maybe not your location there is a caveat to this though so let's say we rotate this on the x-axis by 45 degrees. We now know that we can move it and then press the Z key and press it again to get the local axis and we can move it up and down. And perhaps in this particular case, I actually wanted the Y axis. So I press the Y key twice and there we go. We're moving it in its local axis. Now that can be incredibly useful when you start rotating things round, but you still want to be able to move them on its own local axis. The moment we apply a rotation, we lose that ability. It realigns the local and the global. So if we were to go ahead and apply this object's rotation, we now cannot move it in the same way. We can't scale it along what was its local y-axis anymore. So we lose that ability. So you do have to be careful as to when you apply these transforms. And if you think something with a modifier, with UV unwrapping, or any of the other things I mentioned earlier doesn't look quite right, it's probably because of unapplied transforms. So that is it for this lecture. There's not going to be a challenge associated with it because we're going to use applying our transforms again and again and again as we go through the course. But it's one of those things that will catch you out if you're not careful. And I'll see you all in the next video.